Let us pray. Lord, forgive us for our many sins. Most of all, forgive us when we have betrayed you. Do not turn from us, even though we may have turned from you. By the power of your Spirit, cleanse us and renew us from within. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, O Christ. Tell us who is it that struck you. Then his own people rejected him. Caiaphas, the high priest rose, and tearing his garments, cried out, This man has blasphemed God. His own people made this accusation against him. Can you feel the heartbreak of this? As God, he had nourished, blessed, corrected, and helped this people against countless enemies. Into Israel's keeping, had been placed the promised Messiah. Now that the Messiah had come, Israel cried out against him, This man has blasphemed God. And they made preparations to have him put to death. He came to his own, and his own people knew him not. Schooled as they were in the word of the prophets and the wisdom of the Holy Scriptures, this one who was the word of God incarnate was rejected, ridiculed, and silenced with the penalty of death. In response to his proclamation of the arrival of the kingdom of God, he was offered not coronation, but crucifixion. He was met not with open arms, but with wagging tongues crying, Crucify him! Instead of a king's welcome, he was treated like a criminal and nailed to a cross at the outskirts of the holy city of Jerusalem. For generations, God's people had meditated day and night on the book of the Torah. But now, when God spoke to them in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, their ears were deaf, their eyes were blind, and their hearts were cold. When Jesus came inviting them on a journey of obedience in the way of the kingdom, they came up lame. They turned away and then against him. How tragic that those who were most familiar with the story of God's salvation should miss its most crucial chapter proclaimed in the ministry of Jesus. How ironic that God's chosen people those closest to the love with which God had rescued and sustained them across the generations should now become participants in the plot of his enemies to spurn his love and reject his plea to follow in the way that leads to true life. Have we remained open and receptive to the word of God trying to speak to us in this time? in our situation? Or have we too often been blind to the challenges God places before us? Have we been deaf to God's voice calling out to us? Have our hearts too often been cold to the needy and to the stranger in whom God meets us? 
Do we connect the love God has given with the love we need to share? Do we connect the prayers we offer to our God in heaven with the lives we lead right here on earth? What in the world does it mean to be God's people? Or to put it a different way, what does it mean to be God's people in the world? Let us pray. Father, you have made us your people through the event of our baptism into Christ. And you have instructed us through your Holy Spirit in the ways that we should walk. Grant that our eyes not be blind to your presence in our midst, and that our ears be alerted to recognize your voice and to receive your word with joy. Amen. Please click to the next recording and join us as we sing the hymn, Ah, Holy